Welcome back to Beyond the Boundary podcast. This would be the first F1 video that I'm doing. And I want to talk about the upcoming season F1 2024. Uh, so, uh, this whole video is about uh, the entire season preview. What's going to happen in next year and what are the latest announcements from the FIA, from the F1 Commission. I'm going to cover it all. And before we head, subscribe to the channel because, you know, we need your support. And let's get into it. First, I want to talk about the 2024 calendar. So, back in July 2023, F1 announced their calendar for 2024, which now have two added races in them. So, we had 22 races in 2023, uh, and we have two more now, making it a total of 24 races. And those two races are, one would be the China GP, uh, the Chinese Grand Prix has returned in F1, uh, among with another Italian race uh, in Emilia-Romagna, which is another Italian race, which has been host to many F, uh, many F1 races uh, over the course of history. And just a little bit repositioning of the dates of the races. So it's usually it starts off with Bahrain and then you get uh, to the other countries, you know, uh, US Grand Prix, Miami. Uh, there's a little difference this time around. Because of Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan for Muslims all around the world, uh, the first two races will happen in Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. Yeah, so these two races would be the first two. And similarly, the last two races of the year would be in Qatar and Abu Dhabi. And it, it all does make sense uh, regarding the logistics. Uh, the F1 wants to, you know, in, in fact, the FIA wants to make sure that all the logistics are efficient and they, and they do not use up a lot of good money in losses that could be because of the wrong logistics, you know. So they want everything perfect. Also, the Azerbaijan, uh, the Azerbaijan Grand Prix at Baku, which which happened as the fifth race uh, in 2023, now will be shifted to as the 17th race. So pretty much at the end of the year, uh, after the mid-season. And the Japan Grand Prix at Suzuka, that would be that is shifted uh, in in the fourth place. So, and apart from that, no, there's not a lot of um, changes, big changes in in the calendar. Also, F1 also announced the sprint races for the 2024 calendar a few uh, a few days back. We'd be starting at China in Shanghai. Uh, then we got Miami, Austria, USA, Brazil, and Qatar. Right, so some new places where the sprints uh, are gonna happen. Now, let's talk to the teams and the drivers. And um, I want to talk about a every single team and the drivers. So this would also be like a 2023 season review. Uh, I'll keep it very short. Let's start off with uh, the one big fact. This is the first time, first time in the history of the World Championship that every team and driver is set to remain unchanged from one season to the to, to the next. Meaning there is no change, not a single change in the lineup of the drivers. So the same drivers that you saw in, uh, you know, after the mid-season and I'm not uh, including Nick DeVries uh, and also not Liam Lawson. I'm talking about the lineup that we saw after the mid-season. All of them would be the same lineup for uh, 2024 and let's start with alpha let's start in alphabetical order and that takes us to alfa romeo alfa romeo wow um they did not have a good season and also that uh, there's a big decision from management that now the team would be renamed to sauber so it was alfa romeo sauber now it would only be sauber so alfa romeo yeah gone uh also uh apart from that Audi, uh, you know the racing, uh, not the racing company, Audi or the, man uh, the automobile company. Audi is signing, has already in fact signed a deal with Sauber to uh, to become a team uh, in the S1 in 2026. So two more thousands to go out before that happens. They also unveiled their uh, uh, car, you know, a sort of a concept of that, how it's going to look. So they're going to team up with Sauber, it would be uh, Audi Sauber. And uh, also, let's talk, about, let's talk about the drivers now. So, Valtteri Bottas has his contract until 2024. So, this would be his last season for Alfa Romeo Sauber. Uh, well, Sauber, not Alfa Romeo. And Joe Guanyu also his contract ends uh, this season. So, this would be his last for Sauber. Unless they want to extend it. Uh, let's talk about Bottas. So, Bottas, well, he had this, he had this fine career. Not really good, not really bad. 
uh his time at mercedes was next level we can't even compare to what his season went through in, in this one it was it was this might guan yu zo guan yu did progress a lot um he finished as a top 10 in australia spain and germany so he has progressed a lot given that it's been only a few few years of uh, him being an f1 driver uh also sauba could look at a few names for uh, their next drivers starting with Mick Schumacher who was in Haas racing last year but Mick did not perform well he also Carlos Sainz there are some rumors of him leaving Ferrari after 2024 and if they are true Sauber could be looking at him to be the next driver in line recently um, a few months back uh Theo Porcher he became the F2 champion and Theo Porcher is also Sauber's junior driver for several years and the current team reserve so we might be looking and there's a very good possibility that we could be looking at Theo Porcher to be the the next uh, the future of uh, Sauber to be uh, to 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 look at that and Carlos Sainz and Porcher just imagine the duo that they could do so Sauber could uh, make a good change and you know turn their way around in the championship next up is Alfa Tauri so Alfa Tauri Red Bull's um Red Bull's uh, the second team for Red Bull Alfa Tauri, uh, Sonoda and Ricardo both have contracts till 2024 meaning this season. So Danny made a surprise mid-season, right? He came after Nick DeVries uh, was, you know, was left for himself and he was not performing, it's that simple. So Nick DeVries uh, went away and so Danny made his return and he did well for a returning racer. Like just look at his performance in the mid after mid season races i mean he did not achieve podium he did not win a single race which is quite difficult with the car they have but he his racing was amazing and of course ricardo has been known for uh, his mastery at overtaking and we did see a lot of that in uh, in many races in 2023 uh, about liam lawson so liam lawson will be, still be the reserve after filling in for danny ricardo and he could be signed up for 2025 uh, uh, you know i, I can't say uh and yugi sonoda um apparently the the only best race he he had was uh, the abu dhabi gp where even uh, uh, you know um christian horner himself he appreciated his uh, racing in rally and he said yeah that was the best uh, 2023 race for yugi sonoda so sonoda did not have a pretty good career in 2023 but yeah uh, abu dhabi gp was his moment of fame Now let's come to Alpine, right? <clears throat> so Alpine, Esteban Ocon will be till 2025, and Gasly has signed a multi-year deal uh, with Alpine. And of course, Pierre Gasly has always been, you know, um, an underdog. I mean, uh, except a few things that happened to him way back in 2019. You know, when he uh, he was for Red Bull, then Red Bull got rid of him and took Alex Albon. Uh, Gasly went to. Um, LP uh so ever since uh, that he has been with them last year we all know Alonso left for Aston Martin right in uh, 2022 and so in 23 he was an Aston Martin driver after Alonso's leave uh Alpine focused on pairing up Ocon and Gasly for the future for the future of Alpine even if we say the whole team is good there is drivers and good management has been in a bit of a stir lately Laurent Rossi has moved away from his role of CEO Otmar we all know Otmar from uh, Drive to Survive Otmar removed as team principal so that's a big shock and sporting director Alan Bermain is also leaving so the management is not good right now it's all chaotic there about Gasly and Ocon Gasly he had this Bahrain standout driving it was amazing exceptional driving and he also achieved a podium at the Dutch Grand Prix uh, same for Ocon uh, Ocon Esteban Ocon also achieved a podium at Monaco so it's not completely bad but they are stepping up let's come to Aston Martin now so Aston Martin um Aston Martin so Alonso has this multi year deal with them and Lance Stroll is also confirmed for uh, 2024 Let's talk about the Spaniard, you know, the uh, two-time world champion. So Alonso had eight podiums this year with the Aston Martin Racing 23 AMR 23 car, which was the second biggest car on multiple accounts alongside Mercedes, of course. Now, uh, Lance Stroll is he he has this confusing career. Well, he is a good driver. He has proven himself. But again, uh, he's been always blamed for nepotism because his father's a billionaire, so 
whenever he's out of contract or some team gets rid of him his father has his money to back up him and you know so and always teams are always looking for money so Lance Stroll is pretty much safe um so he's he's probably going to stay stay at Aston Martin but Stroll had a bad season like a pretty bad season especially around the Qatar Grand Prix where he got sick like real sick it was a bad season for him and his bad luck turned into some good luck at the Vegas Grand Prix Vegas was a new track for everyone even Max Verstappen himself he had a bit of a luck there because uh, he call it uh, like yeah he he did some fine racing there as well and Aston Martin could look now about the future so Aston Martin could look at Felipe Drogovic uh, the 2022 F2 champion who also drove for them in the Bahrain and uh, Abu Dhabi for for free practice races moving on to Ferrari you know the classic team that has been defined that really defined a fun uh, it was is the beginning you got like monster people them michael schumacher made his career in F- uh, ferrari uh, charles leclerc the master of multi year contracts will stay till 2029 uh also carlos will be i uh, this would be the last year for carlos till 24 unless he extends of course uh which with the rumors going on seems unlikely the, uh, there has ferrari had a total of seven podiums with with a single race win in carlos signs in singapore grand prix which was spectacular because <laughs> the ferrari fans were disappointed throughout the year with what not uh, engine failures the car goes into the into the barricades they had some tire failures a lot of things and now charles is a fighting contender throughout the season he has been he like we have this meme right charles always takes up all the poles and then verstappen goes on to win the races um and signs may be past the midpoint of his f1 career so that is why he could be looking to join audi in 2026 you know let's see now has okay has has always been the underdog team because it's an american team right um and we all know gunther steiner from uh, drive to survive we we always you know happy to see has um, evolving and focusing on the future a little bit twist so this year this time around has focused more on experience than age uh, age as in youth so they took up uh, nico alkenberg and kevin magnussen you know yeah the one of the greatest rivalries between them and kevin second year started in 2024 of his multi year deal so kevin's going to stay magnussen's going to stay at haas nico's this is nico's final year now uh haas finished last in constructors which is problematic because it's usually really it was racing that comes up last in constructors but this time it's haas so there's definitely some worrying going going around gunter must be angry as hell and jean <laughs> always answering him to the uh answering being answerable to Gene. Uh so nothing special from Haas. No McLaren, okay. Uh McLaren what a comeback I would say. I mean the constructor standing is um we're pretty much expected they did not move up or down. McLaren and uh, Norris let's talk about Lando Norris. Lando Norris signed a new contract extension extension up to 2025. So he's going to stay two more years in McLaren. Uh, and then Piastri till 2026 so three more years for him then i got to say both drivers achieved some pretty good things so piastri's debut year he win this sp- he won the sprint so that's a big deal right and also uh, the f the fia awards happened and he won the rookie of the year award second time in a does tell you about something you know he could be a future world champion and same with landon norris same with landon norris uh, in the in the upcoming 4 to 5 years he could be fighting for the championship it said the drivers championship because he had seven podiums in this championship so that's a pretty good fight then let's go to mercedes so mercedes was the one team dominating everyone before red bull stepped in uh, after max was stopping you know became super max Uh, George is going to stay in 2025 same with Lewis Hamilton. Now, the seven time world champion is pretty much upset with how his season went by. And he has constantly said this in the press that the team at Mercedes are doing everything they can they were learning from their mistakes. And so he's going to fight another year for the championship, you know. He's not going to give up until he's got one more, you know. So he could be looking at it we could be looking at eight time world champion Lewis Hamilton. and also hamilton secured third in driver standings uh, with one pole in the hungarian gp and six podiums pretty much 
that was that's pretty much Hamilton, right? Uh, George Russell, uh, the Brit, uh, he has he had two podiums at Spain and Abu Dhabi. He also did well, except that uh, major crash in the last lap in Singapore GP. He was he could have gotten an, a good uh, podium. Um, and now both drivers we could be looking at we in we in fact are looking at both the drivers fighting for the championship in 2024. Ah, okay, Red Bull because we we're, we're talking alphabetically, so Red Bull guys. Red Bull is the one team that has clearly shown they're doing something good. Not only with the drivers. Let's forget Max for some time. You look at their car. The car is a phenomenal car. It's not. It's not just any car. It, it's hard to drive. And Red Bull, well, they dominated again, right? Right? They won the constructors again, uh, taking it from Mercedes. So Mercedes is still in the back. And Christian Horner has said that. Even with everything Red Bull uh, had in this year on the successes, Mercedes could be a threat for them in 2024. Now, let's talk about Verstappen. So, he signed a five-year extension in 2022. And Perez was given a two-year extension after the 2022 Monaco GP. Uh, okay, let's talk about Verstappen first. So, of course, three times driver champion. He dominated the 2023 season with 19 out of 22 races. And he set a lot of records. 10 race wins consecutively between Miami and Monza Italian Grand Prix. Beating Sebastian Vettel who held that for 9 races. 575 most points in driver standings. And previous record was his own in 2022 with 454 points. And most laps led. 1003 laps led in the entirety of the 2023 season. Um, talking about Sergio Perez, so Chefo started off fine, winning two Grand Prix in Azerbaijan and Saudi, uh, pretty much in the beginning, but mid-season pretty bad. He has been, he's not able to understand the car dynamics the way Max has been able to. He did, uh, it, I mean, it, if it wasn't for a few times like the podiums at Vegas and Abu Dhabi, it could go worse for him. The Red Bull is definitely looking for a better option than Chefo. He could be looking at a younger driver to replace Checo after 2024. And the final team, Williams Racing. So Alex Albon retained on a multi-year deal. Logan Sargent signs for 2024. So again, his last year. Alex Albon has been the underdog performer. Of course, his journey from Brentford to Williams. He has been scoring points in Bahrain, Canada, Britain, Italy, Qatar, US and Mexico. He, he has been, he's been doing phenomenal. You know, his top 10 finishes. He And even with the drivers, <coughs> like if you go to any channel, and they list their 20 top drivers. Alex Albon's definitely, it, he has to be in the top 10. Even if it's at the 10th position, he has proven himself. A disappointing season for Logan Sargent. Uh, he, seven times he failed to finish the race. Seven times he crashed the car or something went wrong. It's, it was not the fault of the engineers as much as it was Logan's fault. He's just not able to compete at that level. So he uh, his best accolade was qualifying 7th in the Vegas GP. Although the Vegas DP is just another equalizer in F1 because it's a new race. It's, it just came this year. And it's, you know, it, it was an easy pass for him. At least Williams didn't make it last this time. I have to say Haas was pretty much disappointing. Now I, I want to talk about changes that are coming in 2024 to the sport and to the cars. Um, so FIA has said that there would be no 3D testing this time before Bahrain. Uh, the pre-season testing. Only one day uh, ahead of the Bahrain Grand Prix. So FIA provided extra days for teams and Pirelli, the tyre uh, supplier, to test everything they want. Also parts like the internal combustion engine, MGU-H, MGU-K, turbochargers. The, the teams requested to them to be a total of 4 per driver but the FIA has kept it to 3. Also about the car. After what happened at the Qatar GP, uh, the harsh conditions in the heat, you know, the temperature. Uh, F1 Commission approved a small scoop at the bottom of the car to direct cool air into the cockpit. Uh, and also, there's no comp. I mean, teams could take it as a competitive advantage if they want to. It doesn't make a lot of difference. It's, it's more important that the drivers be safe and healthy. Because of extreme weather, they allow added cooling equipment uh, and thus increasing the minimum weight of the car. Right? These are the two changes. The, the one change actually. 
and my thoughts now let's i i just want to say about the 2024 uh, season i just want to say i think red bull is dominant is going to dominate again don't doubt and it's all because of verstappen like checo we could see a few podiums uh, maybe one one race win from checo um but red bull's going to dominate uh and not only and <clears throat> not i don't think they're going to dominate like they did in 2023 Teams like Mercedes and Ferrari will step up their game. We, uh, you know, get better cars, uh, uh, and drivers are trusted. They are they're well drivers, um, so they could be. We could be seeing this massive competition from Mercedes and Ferrari. Also, this is the year to look at rising stars like Alex Albon, Oscar Piastri, and even old drivers like Danny Ricciardo. If Danny, because even Danny came after the mid season, so he did not have enough time to. sort of get things in sync and prove himself uh, now that he has this whole season ahead of him we could see his you know we could see some old um so old we could revisit the past with his racing because you know it could be amazing so all of them could get more opportunities to prove themselves 2024 is going to be amazing um i can't wait to see what happens what do you guys think is going to happen in 2024 So could we be looking at a four-time drivers champion in the form of Max Verstappen and another constructors for Red Bull? What do you think? Yeah, let me know, let me know in the comments below and guys subscribe and you know share this video with your friends. See you in the next one. Peace out.